The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. Welcome to the Quirky Dog Podcast, inspired by some of the quirkiest dogs you can ever imagine and the owners who love them. This podcast is brought to you by the quirky couple themselves, Scott and Jess Williams. Their aim is to educate and entertain. Here's Scott and Jess. All right, guys, welcome. We have an exciting show for you in store. I'm super excited about this one. We have a very special guest and his beautiful wife. But first, we're going to start with a quirky tip of the day. And it is. The quirky tip of the day is to follow our very special guest um, on Facebook. His name is Omar Von Mueller. He trains all animals for movies, and it's really awesome. Um, And you can also find them through uh, Von Mueller Shopify. So we will put those links in the description um, of this post also, but um, check him out. I'm sure you've seen his dogs. You haven't necessarily seen him, but we're super excited to have them here today. So you've known Omar. Why don't you do a little intro for us? So uh, Yeah, I first met Omar, um, geez, I don't know, 15, 17 years ago. Uh, I was at a Schutzen club, and Omar showed up with some T-shirts that had artwork he had done for the Schutzen training and they were really cool and I got a shirt from him and then shortly after that I was having trouble with my dog (laughs) and uh, nobody at the club could help me my dog was highly reactive I had put a lot of work into him and uh, someone said uh, uh, this woman Larry Hanson that I know said why don't you go see Omar and see if he can help you and I called Omar and he said yeah bring the dog over and like in 10 minutes he had everything fixed and I was like (laughs) holy shit and so I started uh getting together and doing some training with Omar and it was uh you helped me a lot Omar in case if you can hear me it was a turning point for me I remember Loco he was awesome yeah he was a great dog and uh he was a lot of dog and he was way too much for me but uh Fortunately, I had a quick learning curve there, and I was able to compete with him, and and uh, we had a pretty good relationship. He only bit me. Remember that time when we were doing some bite work, and I was I had the pants yeah, on but no weird. jacket, <laughs> and you were handling him. And he friggin' bit me in the side of the stomach. He uh, bit him. He bit him in a trial one time too. So oh, he yeah. bit him. He bit him a few times yeah. after Loco and Kane when he named Kane from Hurricane. I said you need to name your dogs more thoughtfully, calling yeah. them Loco ha- happier and names. Hurricane and everything is not helping your cause. <laughs> So um, we have Omar and his beautiful wife, Mercy, here with us today. And um, why don't you just explain real quick to Omar what you do for a living and how you describe your job description, because not many people do what you do. Well, I may, I do training for a studio, for, for studio, for movies, commercials, and uh, anything that has to do with entertainment. Uh, entertainment. Yeah, TV commercials and movies, all TV that stuff. TV commercials, whatever, yeah, pretty much. And then again, at the same time, you know, I train my dogs because it's my hobby, something that I really like. It's, uh, it's my passion. So I re- this is something that I really enjoy doing. So even if we're not working, if we're not doing any kind of studio work, I'm always training new tricks and uh, new stuff. Yeah, it's literally my dream vacation to come out and uh, bring a dog and train with you for a few days. I tell Scott all the time. When Adrian was here a few years ago, he's like, oh, he, Omar goes and he has the dog look at the wall and he rewards and then put the feet up and reward. I'm like, that's what I love. That's perfect. <laughs> Small increments make greatness. Um, so you do other dogs also, or other animals besides dogs, right? Uh, I mean, I can, I, can, I can work with just about any animal out there that, can, that is workable. Uh, as for now, I'm concentrating mainly on dogs because that's that's what we do. That's what we have. I have a, we have a couple of cats. We have a couple of birds too. Yeah. But uh, dogs is uh, what we use mainly in the studio work. I have my cat. We did a commercial uh, two days ago with with my cat and with our cat and, and our dog too. Yeah, I remember going to your house one time and uh, you had a box full of pigeons on the front step <laughs> that you had yeah. just found at Ralph's, <laughs> and you had a, uh, about six dogs there, like the hairless cats. <laughs> Yeah. There's a lot going on at that time. Mercy. And you still had the uh, the wolf dog in the back, too. Mercy is a yeah. saint. You are a saint. Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> and you guys have kids, too. Don't you have a couple of girls? Two. We have yeah, two, two girls. girls yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. All the zoos are closed with corona. You guys could just do tours. I know. Yeah. <laughs> hey, is your older one still playing golf? Oh, yeah. She's doing really good. She is incredible in some of these videos that you uh, – yeah. yeah. She's, she's looking uh, good. Yeah. She's working for her scholarship. She's doing, besides golf, she's like an A-plus student. A-plus student, yeah. So she's oh. doing great. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, that's uh, Mercy's uh, genetics there, right? 
Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> Us dog trainers don't run high on the intelligence scale no. sometimes. And what about the girls? Do they like training? Like, do they get involved with the whole thing? How does that work? Uh, they love the animals. I mean, it's like the little one loves to train. Oh, yeah. uh, Terry used to train a lot. When yeah, she when was she smaller. was younger, she would train more. But now Sabrina is, took over. She does yeah, a lot with Lucy. Yeah. And she wants to train Monkey, too. It's yeah. just that he's a little bit too rough for her right now. So I tell her, just wait until he comes down a little. Then yeah, yeah, that always happens with Malinois. They always calm down as they yeah, age. Yeah. <laughs> Loco <laughs> calm down about 13. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, Mercy, did you uh, have dogs before you met Omar? Like, how did you get roped into this whole crazy thing? No, I always had dogs growing up. We always had up to eight dogs. <clears throat> I met him through um, his daughter. I used to work in a law firm in Miami with his daughter. He had an older daughter. And we met long distance. That's how we met. <laughs> On the phone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we, were, we started talking, and I was watching the Lakers play, and then we talked we talk like for eight hours a day. Yeah. Well, your voice is very charming, Omar. I can see how it happened. It's just, see, like, <laughs> you got to see it in person, so then I have to go pick her up, and she brought her to LA, and and she fell in love. And I the mean, rest is history. <laughs> yeah. Well, you had her captive at the kennel there, so you could brainwash her for months. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Back in the kennel. Okay. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah, That's like, okay. All the all the greatest love stories and dogs live in dog kennels at one point yeah, or another. Like, 200 dogs in that kennel. Like, it's like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember when you moved oh, back. Yeah, I had we had piranhas, too. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember that. The uh, apartment over the kennel. Yeah, yeah. That was a while ago, huh? So, Mercy, yeah. do you do um, any of the training, too, or do you mostly just do the caring and the controlling of the house? Like, what is your role in the whole scene? Everything. <laughs> she, does, uh, she helps me with the training yeah. is when, when we're prepping, like, for, for commercial stuff like that, because yeah. it, it's important for the dogs to listen to more people than just me. Yeah. So, anytime you're doing a commercial or whatever it is, it's very important that the dogs understand and they follow somebody else's direction. Mm -hmm. so, so, she helps me a lot, like, Handle them, and I said, okay, let's work on this because, yeah, yeah. But I'm saying in the yeah, training in the house, in the training in the house, you know, she helps me a lot with that because, of, like I say, it's important. She's done uh, quite a few commercials with me. She goes out on set sometimes when she gets a chance because of the kids, it's pretty hard. Yeah, the crazy. But uh, and she helps me a lot, like you know, taking care of all the animals, all the all in town, and uh, she takes care of all the bills, all the yeah. Again, who's getting paid, Again. who's paying me, who hasn't paid me, and all that stuff. <laughs> If it was up to me, I'll be, I don't know. Yeah. It would, it would be crazy. It's, just, it's the same in our house. Same thing. <laughs> we just, we she just, handles all the logistics. I just show up and eat. We just do less uh, We just do less commercials, and Scott probably does a little less training than you. Yeah, um, that's for sure. Give us a little highlight reel about what's going on, because yeah, we know a, you really well, but like, talk about some of the stuff you've done and your dogs or other animals, whatever else, just so people are a little more aware. And make sure you talk about Uggy and go into the red carpet and all that, because that was pretty <laughs> yeah, exciting yeah. stuff. Well, I'm, uh, I've been training for a long time, I, like close to 40 years already, actually. Started training since I was a little kid. When I was like 10, 12 years old, every trick that Lassie and Rinton Tin did, I had to go and train my German Shepherd how to do it. Somehow, I don't remember how I did it, but I did it. And then uh, then we came to the States when I was 15 years old. Then I was training my friend's dogs, my family dogs. When I finished uh, high school, I moved to Florida. And uh, I looked in the paper, something about canine. I didn't even know what canine meant. I was like, okay, letter <laughs> K number nine. And uh, something about training. And I, and I went to check it out. And I was like, I was like, when I got there, I was like, do people actually train dogs for living? You know, that's what I was doing since I was like, okay, get, get paid for that. I mean, I was just looking for a job doing anything, a gas station, anything. And, uh, and they said, yeah. And they gave me a job right away. A few weeks later, I was a head trainer. And uh, never looked back. That's what I've been doing since. Then I moved to LA in uh, about twenty plus years ago, and yeah. started the, in the movie industry. They want to know about the artists. And all that. Oh, and then <laughs> uh, tell us about the artists. He doesn't talk yeah. about the sexy stuff. <laughs> yeah, we talk. I mean, I, it, my whole life I had very successful dogs at that time. You know, it's like first I had a, uh, a uh, first I had a German Shepherd. That was my first dog when I was a kid. Then I had a Newfoundland that it was an amazing, uh, amazing dog. And then I had Carlo, who was a Malinois that we competed in Schutzen. That's when we started doing Schutzen, yeah. sport and all, and all that good stuff. Then, I, oh, I had all kinds of dogs. But uh, the most notable, it would have been Nico. Then I had the, the American the Bulldog. Bulldog, yeah. 
and uh, then I had uh, then then I had Andy. That's the one that I started the movie industry. Uh, Jack Russell. Yeah, we did Orange County. Yeah, we did. Uh, he did quite a. He did a lot of work. He's, he's the one that. Yeah, he's the one that put put my uh, put me into the studio work, and then we had gee, how many? Uh, <laughs> a lot. We had uh, Pete. He's the one that started all the skateboarding deal. Then we yeah. had uh, uh, Rando did all kinds of stuff. Then we had Bordo, the American Bulldog. That was Nico's son that I did a lot of studio work with. And so on. It just kept, kept going. And every time one died, everybody will say, like, whoa, that dog's got a, a big big shoes to fill in. And, yeah. and it will be better. Because yeah. my yeah. experience, I learned more. The more you do this, the more you learn, the better it gets. And uh, then we had Jumpy. Then we had, well, we had Uggy, the Ivy. digital artist. Yeah. Uh, we won a uh, red carpet. We won a. Uh, uh, the Oscars. Into the Oscars. They won won uh, the Academy, Golden Globes. Uh, we traveled with Uggy to France, to the UK. London. Yeah. And uh, so it was, it's been a hell of a ride. I mean, yeah, it's exciting. Every, every dog has taken us somewhere else and, and, and so on. You know, then Jumpy came along and Jumpy just did incredible stuff. So many shows, so many commercials that it's just, I can't even count them. I remember you sending me a video of Jumpy uh, jumping off the hay bales in the bar inside some, it was like the first time you had him jumping. Yes. And it went yes. from that to jumping off the top of school buses and everything. Yeah. Yeah, that was the first time that he actually jumped from something high to me. Yeah, that, you yeah. were so that. excited about that. And then you took that <laughs> yeah. and ran with it. Yeah, you took that to the extreme. See, now that was good naming. He named the dog Jumpy. The yeah. dog had a lot of good jumps, a lot of good hops. That's going my, my, uh, our, our daughter, our daughter named, named him. him. Oh, yeah. see, the brain trust. There you go. <laughs> yeah, because we went, to pick, we went to pick him up. When I picked him up, this guy had him. I was looking for a border collie. And then... Uh, so I look in Craigslist and this guy had a border collie now. So I was like, okay. So I drove like, it was all the way like in Chino, no, not Chino, like in the Riverside area, you yeah, know. It's far away. So I drive all the way out there. It wasn't a border collie. It was a mix. I didn't right. want it. I was looking for a border collie. So I went back home. And then the guy called me that night and he says, you know, he was a young kid. And he said, uh, my dad is going to throw this dog away tomorrow on the street because they were barking their head, her heads off because the dad had just brought him from a farm that he worked. Right. And I said, I don't want it. That's not what I'm looking for. He was dark in the face. For studio work, we look for light color dogs because they get uh, it's harder to photograph when they're dark. Right. So anyways, so he said, please take this dog because my dad is going to throw him out. I was like, okay, you know, I'll meet you halfway. And I took, so I took him pretty much just to get him out of that situation. Yeah. Not because I was going to keep him or anything. And on the way there, my daughter said, uh, what do we name him or whatever? And she says, Jumpy. And I said, okay, <laughs> Jumpy it is. And that's how we, that's how that's we, we name him, yeah. Well, yeah. had you gotten your border collie, you never would have gotten the jumping ability. So it worked out for exactly. the best. Yeah, no, no, yeah. it worked out perfectly. Yeah, just, uh, border collie might have been a little bit too environmental for the kind of work you do. You know, <laughs> it's really some of them are pretty touching. Yeah, yeah, some of them. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Totally. So yeah. what's your favorite place that you've um, either traveled to or your best? Like, what is your what is one of the biggest highlights so far of your career? On, on the we're probably going to be Africa. Yeah. Yeah. When I did the commercial for uh, what was the Savannah beer in Africa with uh, Uggy and Dash. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I thought you were yeah. going to say Water for Elephants was done somewhere in, oh, in Africa, yeah. but no. No, well, well, Water for Elephants was done here. Yeah, yeah, but I, that was my first thought. I think <laughs> elephants in Africa, you know? Oh. <laughs> that's, yeah. That's pretty cool. Um, no, but the place, was probably, the, eh, probably the prettiest place, it was probably Africa. We got to go to a couple of uh, parks and see all the wildlife. And it yeah, was that's really, nice. Very awesome. It was great. Yeah, I know that uh, it's hard right now with everything going on with your business. The entertainment business isn't really uh, rocking and rolling. Yeah, everything is frozen right now, or how's it going? Every, every, everything is shutting down. We have we have two. two we have, we have one coming up this weekend this that weekend it, it that might cancel again like, because we had like we had like six already that canceled. So yeah, yeah. yeah. So we have two more supposedly on the <laughs> but they're there. But I, I'm like I'm not like counting. I'm not like counting on those. Yeah. Either, no. Well, I know that you said that if you had a job, you wouldn't be able to do the podcast. And earlier this week, I knew right. you'd be yeah. here. <laughs> 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 well, it'll find the silver lining somewhere. Um, yeah. And then uh, I was kind of wondering, just out of my own curiosity, if you had to get back into like competitive sports like today, I know that you'd never do that and you're living the dream life, but what sport would you pick and why? Uh, that's a really good question because I really like just about all the sports out there. Uh, 
Da, 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 da. That's, you know, can probably, you can have a top three if it's going to be too hard. The, 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 the top three would probably be something like uh, um, ring sports, shotgun, and believe it or not, I would love to compete in agility. <laughs> and the reason why is because I would love to train a dog to do it on his own. You know, like not running next to him, just yeah. by whistles. In, in your like case, the dog would have to do it on his own. <laughs> you know yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I would have to be like just sitting down here and go left, go right. <laughs> I would love to train a dog like that with that type of control. Yeah. But, but uh, otherwise, Shotsun is a great sport. It's a very precise sport. And uh, it's come a long way since, since I was doing it. Yeah. So yeah, now and, they have all that fancy healing you got to adhere to. But, but you know what? I've had my fancy healing 20 some 30 years ago. When I had my Malinois, that's the way my Malinois used to work back then. And if you look at videos in Schutzen in 1988 or somewhere around there, yeah, it was all the obedience and all these exercises. The dogs were just dragging. Like, uh, the, 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 you barely saw a dog wagging the tail. Right. And my Malinois was in the, in the yeah. highest drive that you can imagine, you know, up and down and, and marching with the teeth up. They, 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 they yeah, well, it, your so. dog ruined it for everybody else. Now everyone's dog had to look like that, you know? <laughs> Oh, it's fun. That's that's the fun part. I'm just and, kidding. Uh, yeah, there was so much, so many different things that we did back then, and uh, that his name was Carlo, and uh, all the training that we did was strictly games and toys and frisbees, and and it was completely against what everybody was doing back then. Yeah. Were you working was, with uh, Al Benuelos then, or was it after with the Bulldog? I was at, no, that's when I came back here. It, it, Carlo was pretty much retired by then. Yeah. Okay. But I, I did meet, meet Al in Florida when he went to the to the Nationals yeah. in 1990, I think it was, that I competed with, uh, with Carlo and he competed with uh, with his dog over there. And uh, but anyways, it was just uh, it was just a lot of fun. Uh, I, I don't know how much time we got, we got on this, but the uh, the shoots on the tracking that we did with uh, with uh, back then, we did it with uh, with him retrieving the articles. Yeah, you had it off leash, right, for the tracking, or I mean, yeah, we, yeah, but we did it retrieving the articles is something that uh, that. Oh, they don't Nobody do that. Yeah, does. now they got it down with the article between their. Well, no, front. that's that's a funny thing because that's what everybody thought it was. But when I read the rules in 1990, 1988, it says that the dog could retrieve an article. Oh, as an optional way to do it's it. It's an optional thing, and uh, I remember it was like, "Shit, that's easy, my dog. My dog loves to retrieve." Yeah. So I taught him by hiding the toys on the on on the ground. Yeah. So it was not it was not like the way we do it now with the hot dogs and treats. Nothing. I didn't train none of that stuff. It was strictly hiding the toy under the make big in a hole, hiding it, and and that's how he learned. And when he will get to the article, he'll bring it to me. He was happy and yeah. go to it. You know. So, and the judge was going to film me because like he was reading the articles. Yeah. And I told the judge, "Have you read the book that you wrote?" Yeah. And he went back to the trailer and he's like, "Oh no, you're right. You can't. You can't read the articles." <laughs> <laughs> and do you guys get um? Your dogs, like, I don't know about over time, but, like, the dogs you get now, do you try to get them as puppies or it doesn't necessarily matter? Uh, I try to get them as puppies, yeah. I like to put a strong foundation on them. I believe that the first year should be very strong foundation on the training, and then then it's a smooth run, you know, after the first year. Yeah, you know how to communicate with them. They know what to expect from you. Exactly. And- yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So does he training 24-7 drive you crazy, Mercy, or is it nice to have him out of your hair half the time? Half and half. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she tells me, you're obsessed with it. I was like, no, yeah. it's, it's not an obsession. It's that I need to get it done. It's, yeah, it's, yeah. The, those are, they only live so many years. And, and I, I believe that the more time that you spend with them is very, is very productive. If, you know, if, if I wait a two day or three day not to train my dog, then it's just, it's a long time. It's a long time. So it's a, <laughs> It's, a, it's an everyday thing. <laughs> yeah, and uh, the the more you do it, the better you get. I remember when I was doing some trick training with you with uh, Kane, mm-hmm. I guess, I don't know, 10, 12 years ago, whenever it was, uh, you would give me homework. You know, I, I wanted to do tricks, and you'd say, okay, do this. And I'd say, how long do you think it'll take me to do that? And you said, ah, maybe three days. <laughs> it would take me like two weeks to get it <laughs> to get it looking really good, you know, because it's just so far out of the realm of what I had been doing up to that point, you know. Yeah. What else do you guys have there? I hear some birds in the background. You got oh, birds, yeah. dogs, cats. What else do you have? There's we a have, bird, uh, a cockatiel. Yeah, we have a cockatiel. We have um, Parrot, um, three doves. Yeah, three doves. Two what cats. Two cats. Our yeah, night dogs. Yeah, yeah, it's a little bit light compared to what it used to be. Yeah, yeah, it's actually really light. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do all I, the used do- to have, I used to have a lot of 
crazy pets. You I had, had piranhas. I had, I had, I had piranhas. I had alligators, <laughs> skunks, raccoons, foxes. Oh, you had the squirrels. I had the lynx. I had squirrels. <laughs> yeah, a bunch of stuff. And you have a great piece of property now. How long have you guys had that house? You're in Lancaster, right? Six years. Six years now, yeah. 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 That's an awesome yeah. backyard. It's a nice place. Yeah, yeah that's, that's what sold me the house. The, the house was... The interior was for her, and the, when I looked outside, it's like, yeah. that's it. Yeah. It's really ugly. It has nothing but dirt oh, yeah, and we, leaves, we, and, yeah, but I, you know, I pictured, you know, with grass and everything, and it's, uh, that's what we turned into. And you put that dock diving pool in there, too, which was pretty cool. Yes, I actually took the, took it off. Like, yeah. Because it was such a pain in the ass to clean that, uh, yeah. that pool. It was, it was crazy, because we live in the desert area, so there's a lot of dust, a lot of dust. Right. So every time that, uh, you know, you clean it and then you get this wind storms and uh, yeah, it's, it's all crazy. muddy. It's, uh, yeah. It's, yeah. Mud in the bottom that you have to vacuum all that stuff. So it's like, I said, you know what, this year we're going to do without, without that. I just, I put grass on it. So we're going to kind of make it, it nice yeah. for the yeah. kids in the back. Probably. Yeah. That's what we're going to do. Yeah. yeah. Like a little park for the kids. Back and there. now you have your American Ninja course. Now that you don't have the dock dog pool there, you have more room in the back. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's in this side. In the back, I don't even, I don't even have anything yeah. in the back. Yeah. In the back, we don't have anything. Well, yeah, no. you do have a, the yeah. ninja course is on this side, yeah. yeah hey, I wanted to ask good. you, speaking of that ninja course, where you have uh, the dogs doing that, going up, walking up the walls, you know, two of them parallel yeah, yeah, to each yeah. other. Did you start that after seeing that dog trying to look over that wall, walking his back end up the tree? Very good, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> that looks, <laughs> as soon as I saw that, I said, anything, that's right. Anything that goes viral, Omar trains. <laughs> no, it's, no, it's funny. It. Whenever, you, whenever you see a cool trick or a behavior that you like, you immediately start getting all your dogs to do it, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And yeah. you train crazy stuff. I mean, people don't even realize the types of stuff you've trained. So probably what is your proudest trick or your proudest thing that you've taught all the dogs to do? And Scott always says he's so impressed because, like, you have this set of things and then each dog always does it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like your way, Each dog does like the 30 same yeah, behaviors but the and way then you'll you focus can in. Replicate it is just amazing. But what's your favorite fav favorite trick that you've ever trained? My favorite trick, it will probably probably be uh whoa. The believe it or not, is I think it's probably the skateboarding that Jumpy did. Yeah. Because uh it's really, I mean, uh it was really incredible to see that dog skateboarding. I mean, we see the the intensity and the. I mean, he used to go up and up in a bowl twelve feet high and turn up in the air and come down and and hit it. So it was just a. He really, was like a person. <laughs> yeah, it was just an amazing thing to see. I mean, there's a lot of dogs that are skateboarding nowadays when they're doing nice turns and blah blah blah. But really, to see Jumpy just drop on a bowl that is that it will go down twelve feet under and twelve feet up and turn up and and turn and do all this. Uh, that really took a lot of skills and training. A lot, a lot of and, confidence uh, on his part too, yeah. Huh? Yeah. A lot of confidence. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean to, train, to train a dog to skateboard like that, I used to get up at 5 o'clock in the morning every day because I had to go to a parking lot where there's no cars or nobody. Right. And, and train him. And then that same night, go to another parking lot at 11 or 12 o'clock at night because right. there's no cars or nothing like that. We got kicked out of so many parking lots. That were funny. <laughs> <laughs> And then, uh, and then go to the skateboarding parts. It was the same deal because I mean, he, you cannot control the speed of a dog, and you don't want him to knock down a kid. So right. I had, I had like to get. I used to go to the one in uh, Van Nuys somewhere around there. That uh, what's it called? Yeah. That uh, we used to like crawl through the fence and go there before it opened. So it's like we had to go through a lot of stuff, a lot of time, a lot of training to get him where he was. So that's probably what I'd probably be the most proud of uh, is uh, jumping doing the skateboarding that he did. Yeah. Do you do um like treadmill work and just retrieves and stuff just for shits and giggles too in training? Like do you do some cross training or just mostly the trick training? Well, it's a it's a, it's a combination of everything. I like I like to use all different techniques for for different different types of training. And uh, the question was about retrieving said again. I think, well, I think just I the no one understands the body um, work that your dogs have, like the body awareness and the strength. You know what I mean? And the proprioception. Yeah, uh -huh. Like, yeah, okay, he can do that. That looks cool. It takes massive muscle strength and everything yeah. else and coordination to be able to do these things that you train also. So, like, just from yeah. a cross training perspective, do you go do retrieves for ten minutes outside of training? Do you treadmill your dogs? Like, do you have any kind of cross training that you touch on there or no? I do. I do. It, it's all. It, it really all changes. I mean, I have like usually I have uh, like a list. I don't know if you guys can see this very well. Yeah. Well, 
the kind audience of, will be able uh, to see it better yeah. than us. Yeah. Okay. So, but anyways, this is like a list of uh, what Monkey's doing right now, for example, right? And there's uh, there's about 55 things that he's doing. Yeah. So uh, he's not a year yet. He's doing about 55 things. So I have like a dot on everything. And then I have the two dots on the ones that need work. So, okay, I started concentrating on that. And uh, like you were saying about, about, uh, about strengthening the bodies, like he's going to start walking. So every day we do a little bit of standing on the hind legs, just, just a few seconds. And right. then we'll be increasing, increasing until, until he'll be able to walk like, like Lucy can. Right. So it takes, it takes time. It takes, I do a lot of frisbee, a lot of ball. We go to the park, a lot of running. It's very important to have him to have, to have him as top athletes. That's just uh, very, very important. Maybe after you get him walking, him and Lucy can dance instead of you and Lucy. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you probably have better moves than I do. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just, it's amazing what you're able to accomplish. And 55 behaviors under a year, the people that can't even get their dog to walk down the street under a year do one behavior. You know, you, you got to look, think outside the box a little bit, people. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, it's just like you have to spend the time with your dog. That's just the bottom line. Yeah. If you don't, they're not going to learn by themselves. They're, they're like kids. You have to educate them. You have to take them on the right path. And, uh, you know, I have a Malinois. Malinois are known to be very strong. You have to be careful with them. They're not going to bite somebody in the face and blah, blah, blah. So I have to make sure that I train him and socialize him. And, and he's okay with, with our kids love him. And then yeah. they hug him and kiss him. And he's totally safe. And at the same time, we're doing a lot of, like, fake aggression because it's going to be needed for studio work for him to do some attack work and stuff like that. So, yeah, I, I saw him. He was guarding the toilet paper uh, yesterday. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. So it's, 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 a, it's a fine line that you got to make sure that the dog stays there. Where did you find him, uh, Monkey? Because he seems like a pretty social puppy. A Craigslist, 200 bucks. Wow, he's nice. You got that's, lucky. You got lucky with him. <laughs> you know what, I, Scott? I really don't think it's too much of being lucky. It's about how you raise him. Yeah. It's like when, when I get a dog, I don't care if it's coming from the dog pound or a top breeder in the world, I picture what the dog's going to do. And uh, if the dog has some type of a uh, temperament, agility, I mean, uh, structurally fine, well put together and stuff like that, I'm pretty sure that I can guide him to what I want. I mean, if I was going to take chances on him when he was uh, three months old, four months old, yeah. I was going to take a chances of him my kid playing on his face, right? He probably, he probably would have been her. Right. So I waited until the right time to, to introduce him and make sure that it's, that it's not going to happen. So Sure. And all that being said, he's a Malinois, so you got to keep an eye on him. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and you're not, Scott says, I mean, if the dog's crazy, you're not going to deal with a dog that's not going to suit your lifestyle also, right? I mean, do you kind of screen no. that way? Yeah, of course. I mean, not, not every dog is going to be a good dog, of course. I mean, I'd say most of the dogs, most of the dogs that, if you're racing the right way, yeah. But every once in a while, you will get one that has a little screw loose that that it cannot be fixed. There's yeah. just uh, there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah, that's that's my primary client. <laughs> <laughs> we get so many rescue dogs now that are coming from the south that have all kinds of issues, and they're you know yeah. three to five years old, and they're tough, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Marcy, can you even believe this is your life? Did you think when you were a little girl that this would be what would be turning into your life? It's no, her dream. <laughs> it's, it's her dream. dream. Listen, Omar, <laughs> she's living uh, her dream. It's a lot of fun stuff, you know, yeah. so it's nice. <laughs> yeah. No, well, we really appreciate you guys being on, and especially um, during everything going on with the coronavirus and everything, guys, check out Omar on Facebook and uh, through the links. They'll be in the description. And, um, you know, support everybody, especially in industries like this, in every way you can, because it's not easy. Do you have any other closing thoughts? Um, what I would say, just can you give us a brief description on what this trick course is going to be like that you're going to offer? Because I've been looking forward to seeing you. I know you started to do something like this a few years back. I don't know if it was on the VHS tape or CD or something, but you were you had the tricks with Omar and and uh, or was it training an, was it Omar. an online the training with Omar was that an online thing you were doing no, at that I point? A, I, had a few, I, I did a few things. I did a few things. I mean, you're talking a long, long time ago. I did like a semi trick video, but that was a long, long time. ago. Yeah, it was long. I remember you had done it. Uh, I have uh, four tricks that I'm selling in Shopify oh. that I have for years, but I never followed through. I was going to do a lot more. Right. There were specifically. We have some. There are four uh, skateboarding. Skateboard? No, no. Cover the eyes, frisbee, cross your legs, and uh, and the marks. And the marks. Yeah, so, those were the ones that, that I had. And then, uh, so now I'm going to bring this one out. This one was uh, 111 tricks that I started to do with jumping. 
Okay. So that's, uh, I was doing uh, 30 some so far we jumped in, and then that's when he got sick. So I completely put it away. I didn't want to touch it. I didn't want to see it. I, could, I couldn't see Jumpy doing anything. I was just yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. Devastating. So that's been a couple of years. So I said, you know what? It's time to start rolling again and doing it. So I started working. I have plenty of dogs to finish the 111 tricks, and, and maybe we'll do 100 more later on. Or whatever. Yeah. There's, there's, there's plenty of behaviors too. I'm sure you got plenty so, of footage to use. There's plenty, there's plenty of footage, yeah. Yeah. So. Well, when it comes out, we'll share it, and maybe Scott and I will do some training challenges. Yeah. We'll, we'll yeah, train we'll our dogs going. separately in video and tag you. We'll see who makes the quicker progress. Oh, well, go out and train <laughs> tricks, dude. This is awesome. This is There's so many that we can do. There's like, it's not just heels and downs. They come. It becomes something different every day. It's just, just a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, we appreciate having you both on. Um, good luck with everything out there. Uh, stay safe and keep all those animals safe. And the birds seem like they quieted down. I don't know. I guess they're bored with us now. Oh, he did. Good. Yeah, I was going to say we should have t- taught the hold with the pencil because he was a little noisy, but now he's done. He, he felt like he wasn't represented well enough. Well, thank you guys so much for being on. I will meet you both in person one day, and uh, we appreciate your time. Thanks, Omar. Good to see you again. And Mercy, thank you for coming on. All right, guys, keep it quirky. All right. (laughs) Does your dog seem anxious? Would you like your dog to relax? Do you want to feel more in control? Would you like your dog to cooperate? How to calm your canine.com. That's how to calm your canine.com. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.